my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to welcome you all to this new Islamic institution, the Islamic Institute of America. I would like to thank each one of you for participating, for supporting, for helping, for being an integral, integral part of this institution. Without your help and before you, bef without Allah's help, we would have not been able to open this place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى It is all due to His generosity and His glory that we are able to achieve those, those goals and open those centers. And also due to the generosity and support of this wonderful community. My dear brothers and sisters, let me make a few points today as we are gathering here in this place to hold our Friday prayer. First of all, my dear brothers and sisters, this place was already a worship place, even when it was a church, because a church is a worship place. And it is a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshipped. When Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam was coming back from the battle of Safin, he stopped at a church that used to be church. And he prayed there. And some Muslims said to the Prophet, uh, to the Imam alayhi salam, قَالُوا طَالَمَا أُشْرِكَ بِاللَّهِ فِي هَذَا الْمَكَانِ for how many years there was shirk, people used to ascribe partner to Allah in this place. But then the Imam alayhi salam also reply, replied by saying, Don't say that. Say that Allah was being worshipped in this place even when it was a church. Because... Christians also worship the same God we worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I don't want anybody to think that this is a takeover. We have deep respect for our interfaith brothers and sisters, the Christians, the Jews. And therefore, I don't see that there is a big difference. It was a house of worship. And alhamdulillah, now it is also a, a house of worship. And we in this a new institution, not only we welcome Muslims, but also we welcome non-Muslims. I take this opportunity to extend an invitation to our non-Muslim brothers and sisters to come and join us. Islam is not, I always say this, Islam is not a cult. Islam is not a secretive denomination with secretive practices. Islam is the third monotheistic, is the third monotheistic religion with at least 1.6 billion followers worldwide. Let Americans come and know about our religion. Let us dispel many misconceptions that exist in the mind of many non-Muslims about our faith. How do we do that? By inviting them. By asking them to come and join us. And this is one of the things we're having in mind, inshallah. To hold a monthly open house in this center catered and geared toward non-Muslims for them to come and learn about Islam. We're not trying to proselytize. We're not trying to convert anybody to our religion. You know why? Because there is one who will convert the heart of people, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
فمن يرد الله أن يهديه يشرح صدره للإسلام Allah says that it is me who converts people's heart to the faith of Islam. Our job is not to convert. Our job is to educate and teach, not to force people to accept one faith or another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, Chapter 2, Ayah 255 says, La ikraha fiddeen. There shall be no coercion in faith. But our job, my dear brothers and sisters, as Muslims in this country, is to act as ambassadors of Islam to non Muslims. And I think this is a holy and sacred duty for all of us. To give an accurate understanding of Islam to non-Muslims. Because if you and I will not do that, who is going to do this? The terrorists will do that. Daesh will define Islam to non-Muslims. Al-Qaeda will define Islam to non-Muslims. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi will do that. They will define Islam for the world through their atrocities and brutalities, when the vast majority of Muslims remain silent, they don't speak up, they do not become proactive in preaching their religion, those fringe groups will take that job onto themselves, and they will define Islam for the world. So, it is our duty, my dear brothers and sisters, to educate our neighbors, about our Islam. And believe me, my dear brothers and sisters, there is no better way to educate non-Muslims about our faith than practicing what we preach. How do you think the Prophet was able to attract millions of people? By the time he died, after 23 years, the entire Arabian Peninsula under, came under his rule. How? By the sword? No. By his akhlaq, by his character. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam listened to the sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Our holy Prophet was in Mecca when he saw an elderly woman wrestling with the Lord she was carrying. The Prophet, with so much humility, approached her. He didn't ask her if she is Muslim or not. He didn't ask her if she believes in his prophethood or not. All he did says, Ya Umma, Mother, would you allow me to help you carry? Of course, she wasn't Muslim. Would you allow me to carry your Lord? She says, I would really appreciate if you do that. The Prophet himself carried his Lord, her Lord, her Lord to her house. When they arrived, the Prophet arrived into her house. She looks at the Prophet not knowing him, not recognizing him. She says, my son, thank you for helping me. There is no way for me to pay you off, but I have one way to pay you off. And the Prophet says, yes, tell me. She says, I just have an advice for you that there is a magician in our town called Muhammad. Just be careful not to talk to him, not to be influenced by him. The Prophet says to her, if you see Muhammad, do you recognize him? She says, no, I do not recognize him. I just heard about him. He told her, Ana Muhammad ibn Abdullah. I am Muhammad. She says, Billahi alayk, anta Muhammad? You're Muhammad? He says, yes, I am Muhammad. Qalat ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa annaka Rasulullah. Let's show respect to our non-Muslim neighbors. You know, I read in the news, and most of you read also in the news, 
yesterday about a doctor. Her name is Dr. Ryan. I forgot her first name. This doctor here, she works at Henry Ford Hospital. She saw a car accident on 96. Someone was injured. As a doctor, as a humanitarian, she stopped. She could have continued her way and went home and enjoyed her family and her livelihood. But because she was a conscientious person, she decided to stop immediately and help the injured. As she was helping the injured, another car came. The driver lost control. He hit her and he killed her immediately. Her son, they both died. This lady sacrificed her life. Now, my brothers and sisters, this lady will never die. Physically, yes, she did. But she will never die through the heroic act. This is how we need to preach Islam, my dear brothers and sisters. We can preach Islam through our words. But when we show Islam, the world the true essence of Islam... The true essence of our religion, that our religion is not here to compete with other faiths. It's not a business. It's not a supermarket. Rather, Islam here is to complement other religions. The Prophet says, I did not come to compete with other Prophet, to take their business away. Rather, I came to complete their message, their moral message. And that is something we need to do as well, my dear brothers and sisters. We need to live Islam, not only talk about Islam. We need to show the world how peaceful this religion is, how great this religion is. We need to show Americans that we do care about them. And that's why I repeat saying that this center will be open for all people, including non-Muslims. We will welcome everybody coming to this place. All Muslims, Shia and Sunni, Arabs and non-Arabs, African Americans, every single individual should be treated with respect and honor once they come here, because this is not my house, this is not anybody's house, it is Allah's house. And Allah in the Quran says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدم. I have honored the humans. He did not say, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْتُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ I did not honor, I honored Muslims only. He says, I honor all children of Adam. And therefore, all children of Adam, all individuals, Muslims, non-Muslims, should be respected in this place. And they should be welcome. My dear brothers and sisters,